questions about difficult conversations with Dr. Anne Su. Hi there, I'm the founder of a small startup and I have a contracting employee who's been with us for about a year. She started off very enthusiastic and hardworking, but recently I've been getting feedback from some of our clients that she hasn't been very responsive. They make comments like, oh, I messaged her, but she hasn't replied, or I emailed her, but I haven't heard back. I also find that she's been defensive when I've tried to give her feedback in the past. For example, we recently had a scheduled call with an external client, which I wasn't meant to attend. I just happened to be there and so I joined the call, but she actually didn't turn up at all to the client meeting. When I said this to her later, she said, uh, well, you haven't turned up many times. But what she's talking about isn't the same thing. She's talking about a daily call we have every morning, which I sometimes need to reschedule. When I don't turn up to those calls, I'll message her to say, I'll call you later. But this isn't the same thing as not showing up to a call with a client. I also find her talking back like this to be not very respectful, given that I'm her boss. Part of the reason why I'm struggling with giving honest feedback, though, is that I'm worried that if she takes my feedback badly, it might demotivate her. She might start being even less reliable or maybe quit. We're a really small and stretched team, and I just can't afford to have her stop working right now. I'd like to figure out how to give her feedback on her performance and also her behavior without getting into an argument. Thank you. Thanks for the question. So what I hear from this email is that there is an employee who very much needs to have some feedback. And it sounds like there are two separate issues here. First, there are the performance issues relating to the lack of reliability and the lack of responsiveness. And second, there is this defensive response um, and what is experienced by the manager as not having the level of respect that they'd like. So we can't ever guarantee that someone is going to respond non-defensively. But the best way to minimize the chance of a defensive response is to be as neutral and objective as possible in describing the situation and linking the behaviors to the impacts on the outcomes and the aspirations that you want for the team or the business or your working relationship. So both for performance issues, as well as the defensive attitude, there are objective ways of describing the behaviors and why it doesn't achieve the outcomes and effectiveness that you're looking for. So in terms of the conversation about performance, you can talk about what's required for the role and the consequences of lack of reliability and responsiveness, because I think it's quite important for this employee to understand the consequences of these things on the perception and rep reputation for your organizations and your ability to deliver what you want to deliver to your clients up to a certain standard. For example, you can say, we, recently we had a call with a client. I wasn't going to definitely show up. If I hadn't shown up, no one would have showed up, which means that the client would have shown up for a meeting with no one there and they could have lost trust in our organization and this isn't the level of reliability that I want to be showing. And I'm also worried that the reputation of our organization is at stake. You can also convey the impact it has on you. For example, you can say, when this happens, I get stressed because I want to feel that I can rely on our team members to be providing this reliable level of service for our clients. And for the second issue of respect, again, there's a, a way of describing it more objectively. So don't characterize it like, oh, you're talking back to me and being disrespectful. Instead, say, well, last time I wanted to speak to you about not showing up for a meeting, you responded by saying, well, you didn't show up either. And I view that as a unrelated issue because I was talking about a meeting with an external client and there wasn't any rescheduling. And separately, I realized there are times when I have meeting between you and I where I I'm unable to make it and I do tell you ahead of time that I'm going to call you later. If that is also an issue, you're very happy to discuss the separate topic separately. And you could say something such as when I bring up something to discuss, I'd like to focus specifically on that issue at hand. If you have a separate issue that you'd like to discuss, but it's a, about a different situation with a different context, let's mark that as something to have a separate discussion about. 
to summarize, um, you mentioned that you really want to avoid getting into an argument and minimize the chance of a defensive response. And to avoid getting in arguments, it's really important to avoid interpreting what's going on inside someone else's head and to avoid making interpretations of their, their intentions. So we want to avoid words such as uncommitted or lazy or disrespectful, etc. Because then they could be triggered into a defensive response and want to argue back by saying, well, no, I was so busy. I had so many things on my plate. Of course, maybe some things will drop. So to avoid arguments, you really want to stick to what's observable so that there's no room for dispute. Because again, if it's just objective and pointing to the needs that you want to uphold for the organization, this directs the focus away from blame and judgment towards the employee and puts the focus towards positive aspirations and joint purpose. This makes it much less likely that you'll trigger their defensiveness and helps keep them motivated to work with you towards better outcomes. Thanks so much for listening. Until next time.